years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And the guy sings. <laughs> What do you think of this new animation for Gabnet? I tried it tonight. We'll see how it works. Anyway, we're going to be on until midnight, and the Citizen Panel will join us in just a little bit. But uh, right now, we have to go check in with uh, a regular friend that we talk to at least once a week because I like him so much. Ladies and gentlemen, out in San Francisco, it's the... I always like to say musical stylings. Let's see here. The comedy stylings. Let's try that one. Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Hello. I remember the guy in the 80s. That was a, that was a common introduction for a, Remember, they'd always say the comedy stylings. And the comedy stylings <laughs> of, anybody. of Larry Bubbles <laughs> Brown. Bad. Yes. Funny man, Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> TV funny man. Huh? Then they say TV funny man. TV funny man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember for, for a short time here in New York, though, I, I got the, uh, what was it? Sometimes you get a name attached to you, a, a style of name. And the, the one I had here in New York was, uh, was, it, was it teen or was it? Yeah, youth. Oh, youth. Yeah. Youth guru Alex Bennett. Really? Guru <laughs> Youth Guru Alex Bennett. Hi, this is Youth Guru Alex Bennett. I'm happy to be your Youth Guru. Um, and that I couldn't get rid of. Okay? So that's why I came to California, went to California. Because in those days, if you did your act, say, in New York, all right? And I call what I do an act. Uh, if you do your, did your act in New York, um, you could you could you be the youth guru and you couldn't get rid of that and you were set as being a certain kind of personality right but mm -hmm. now you can move to san francisco and nobody knew you there so you could then establish your new identity somewhere else and then i became you know comedy guru alex bennett <laughs> you know but uh i had to leave new york and then come back and when I came back, somehow everybody remembered me and appreciated me, and doors opened to me. This was after, like, I don't know, maybe 20 years. So uh, I, I, no one ever referred to me again as youth guru Alex Bennett. And uh, that, that made me happy because I didn't like that. So here's funny man, Larry funny. Bubbles Brown. <laughs> I like that one. Well, I remember, who was it? Ronnie Shell. Remember Ronnie Shell? Yeah. He was a San Francisco comic. And um, he, he billed himself as the world's slowest rising young comedian. That's right, yeah. Yeah, because they would always say, here's America's fastest rising young comedian. Well, he was America's slowest rising. And he was right, too. He did, his career was not meteoric in any respect. And he was like me. He he never liked to headline. He's still middle, so he still works at Vegas sometimes. He middle. Do you feel like com more comfortable being a middle? Yeah, I, I don't like to do long sets, and I now because I can't remember half my act anymore. So it's just a. And I always felt there was a, as a headliner, you just felt the pressure. The show's got to be good, and if you go up in the middle. Your, your really act, matter. your act, never, never had that intensity that allowed you to be a a headliner. Yeah, to be a headliner, really, there's some exception, but I think you really need to have that good energy. And yeah. after uh, 20 minutes, they start to put him to sleep, you know? Yeah, yeah. You're good for what, 20 minutes? I'm good for 20. In bed and on stage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maximum 20 minutes, or could you? <laughs> like they both get boring after 20, don't they? Or could you go longer? I, when I was younger, I could. I'm talking about the comedy, okay? <laughs> I know you can't go longer the other way, but this way, you know. I did uh, I did an hour a couple, three times in the 80s, yeah. And just, uh, 
I saw this kid at an open mic last year, and I just this summed it up perfectly. He goes, he said, stand up comedy is kind of rude because you stand there and talk, and no one else <laughs> interacts. You just talk. It's very rude. Uh, very, <laughs> but he's right. Uh, yes, it is. It is. Uh, it, 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 would you say? Here's what I found when I would get on stage and. That was not all that fre as frequent as you, but I would get on stage when I hosted my comedy shows and things like that. Uh, and I had a perfectly built-in audience for me, so I could just make references that no, wouldn't be funny anywhere else, but in the context of my audience sitting there, it would make them laugh hard, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, I would have been a lousy comedian anywhere else but with a crowd that accepted me the minute I stepped on stage. All right. And um, uh, I, uh, uh, what was the point I was trying to make? Uh, so, uh, y you know, I mean, oh, yeah. So the thing that I found that I enjoyed most is when I made them laugh, especially when I made them laugh hard, it was almost the same feeling I had when I made a woman come. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it's, uh, I can see why. You know why? Because I always enjoyed making a woman come. It was just like, if I didn't make a woman come, I would, I would not have had, a, I was not having a good time. Okay. Well, in both cases, you're bringing joy to the other person. Yeah. Right? Well, you're bringing joy, but the way I got off was getting them off. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, and so. Uh, the reason why I think, and that the same thing then carried over to making an audience laugh, was that I had control of someone else's emotion. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it was a power thing. It was a power thing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, hey, I can make you come. You know, I mean, I used to have a, my ex-wife, I used to be able to make her come just by sitting at a... Uh, uh, a, in a restaurant and saying you're going to have an orgasm now right. <laughs> yeah and and I would talk her right into it fast and she would have it right at the right at the uh, at dinner table nobody else oh, in the sure. restaurant would notice it but uh, she had a look on her face that I knew it was happening and that gave me a great sense of power you know I can make her come even without having my dick in her wow you know and then after a while, I began to think it was way too easy. So that was a problem, too. Yeah, but, you want to have a little average. But, but, what, what? If you're experiencing trouble, please give feedback through the Alexa app. All right, shut up. Fucking. My, my machine, my, uh, my, uh, Alexa, uh, is, uh, is, is telling me that it's having trouble. So. Okay. Okay, I'm glad you're having trouble. For instance, Alexa, what time is it? Uh, Echo, what time is it? The time is 1.36 p.m. Well, apparently it is working, so, you know, I don't know. Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah, so, I mean, did you find that you like that power? I mean, when you get a good laugh, does that make you feel satisfied? It's always good to get the big laugh. Uh, the thing I always had in the back of my mind was, oh, my God, they're laughing. I'm not going to be able to keep this level going. Uh, oh, is that is that your problem? Yeah, but, yeah so that's why I kind has of that ever, to, Has that ever been a problem to keep that going? Uh, just, just on stage. Just on stage. <laughs> but, yeah, I always felt like uh, Aiden has been a problem because I can – I'd kill for 20, and then I'd feel, hey, I'm starting to lose them, and that's a worse feeling. You're just, when you've done well, and then it starts to ebb. And Why don't you just get off at that point? That's what I usually do. Oh, okay. All right. So you know when, in other words, you know when to leave the stage. That, which is one of the, uh, most of the comics these days have no idea that uh, it's better to go early than late, and they just go on forever. I find that so annoying. Either that or there's the comic who loses them and thinks that by continually going for 10 more minutes, he's going to get them back. Yeah, or an hour, and it's just, it's just torture. Uh, I'm trying to remember if I ever had a comedy comic at any of my shows because I always had people do relatively short sets because I would run yeah, five. Yeah, those are like your shows where you did like, what, 10 minutes? Well, uh, if you were the uh, if you were the uh, opening act, I would have you do. 
I, but the, the opening act was always the second best act I had because I, I, I went against comedy theory. You know, most clubs, they have the what they consider to be the worst comic on first. Uh, yeah, you, as, so you did it right, which is, the, I think, the stupidest thing you can do when you had the first act is not that great the audience is going to think shit did i make a mistake yeah well what happened but you came out with a strong act and yeah. i remember one night you had uh kravitz was grousing because he was opening one of the shows we did and i said no no he's putting you on because you're good that's why you're going first yeah if i buried you in the middle you might have a question about that but then yeah. again i never hired comics i didn't think could do the job but I always I had that problem with um, with um, uh, what's his name our friend who died of AIDS uh, or died uh, the black comic um, uh, Warren w Warren Thomas I had that problem with Warren because I said Warren you're opening and he was Am I, I'm that bad I said no you're that good <laughs> I always put the the second strongest act I have as an opener. Because I want the show to open big, you know. I want people to be laughing immediately, you know. Then I'll I'll put on the less comics as we go go down, you know. And in the middle, I will bury I will bury with a strong one. I will bury the weakest comedian in the middle. Although many times that was a very good act, you shouldn't feel that I was burying them really. Yeah, you know, I think yeah the lineups you had were all good. Yeah, and I would never have a uh, a person leading into my uh, um, uh, headliner who somehow did something that could upstage the headliner, like play a guitar or... Yeah, you do, don't want that. I, I didn't want prop comics before my headliner. They were very hard acts to follow, even if you were a headliner and a good, good enough act to be a headliner. So, you know. And then there were some people I had to absolutely use as the headliner. You know, like Goldthwait, I could never use as anything else but a headliner because you wouldn't want him. You wouldn't want anybody to have to follow Goldthwait. Not that Goldthwait was that funny, but that Goldthwait was that uh, noisy. Okay? And a, a act that screams and shouts will always be the headliner because nobody wants to follow him. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, look, Sam Kinison, good example. Who wanted to follow Sam Kinison? And it was not that he was that funny, but that he was that loud. You know. Uh, so, you know, he put the prop comic on second, okay? Or maybe even in the middle. You know, so. Uh, prop comics, folks, are comics who come out with a... I remember Bruce Baby Man Bomb, greatest prop comic of all time, practically would come on stage, and he literally had a tarp that he would remove from everything on stage that he was going to use as a prop. And he went from one prop to another prop to another prop to another prop. But he, you know, you wouldn't want him on before a headliner. So you'd put him on, like, second, something like that, you know. But anyway, that was my theory. And you were right. Hey, listen, you got your big book there with uh, names of people that I can try. I got the big book. We have, uh, okay, I've got celebrities that have died or celebrities and their real names. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Ra celebrities. Raquel, Raquel Tejada. Would that be Raquel Welch? That's Raquel Welch. Yeah, because I, I figured as much because it was like a, a Spanish name or whatever. And uh, she was, and, you know. I don't know how they suddenly come up with their last name, though. How do you get from Tejada or whatever the name was to, to Welch, you know? That, uh, yeah, that's uh, really anglicized, that one. Yeah. She's still, uh, God, when I was a, that was when I was younger. <laughs> that was a woman we all dreamed of. Yeah, yeah. And she looked good. I, maybe she still looks good, but she looked good in like she was in her 70s. Yeah. Yeah, but I'll tell you, if I wanted a beautiful woman in those days, I, you know, in a, in a swimsuit, which is, it wouldn't be Raquel Welch, it would be Ursula Andrus. Oh, the best, yeah. Yeah. Just great movie sex. Yeah. I think that uh, that shot of her, it was a doctor, no? Yeah, coming out of the water. It's iconic. Oh my God. It's absolutely iconic. <laughs> yeah. A 
amazing. Yeah. Oh, I had something I put on Facebook. I was I was gonna. I like I like horse faced women. So I want to start a calendar called Horse Face Hotties. <laughs> <laughs> so I had uh, this is true because I do like uh, and the the four I could I needed twelve names. The ones I liked I like Amanda Pete. Yeah, but you, you, uh, but she has a sexy quality about her. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't mean this demeaning. I think they're gorgeous, but I maybe horse face is not a uh, kind name. But uh, oh, who was it? It was Amanda Peet. There was four more I had. I didn't like. Everyone liked uh, Jessica, Sarah Jessica Parker, which is not one of my favorites. Uh, not one of my favorites either. No. 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 But do you have a favorite horse face? Oh, jeez, I don't know. I I really don't know that I have a favorite horse face. I said Ann Coulter, and everyone flipped out because of her politics. <laughs> <laughs> Does she have a horse face? Yeah. Oh, okay. Long. All right. I mean, do you want to shove oats in her mouth? Is that? It's <laughs> like a saddle up that little filly. I never knew anybody that said I like women who are horse faced as a type. You know, uh, but I'm trying to think: is there any horse faced women that that turn me on? Nah, I, I've never been into horse faces. I mean, it's not that I would turn a horse face down. Then again, I wouldn't turn anybody down, you know, so. Who else is a horse face? Do you have any others in there? I was trying to think. I had four. People are sending me uh, their favorites. With pictures of I horses. I remember them now. Yeah. Mr. Ed had a good horse face. Mr. Ed. And yeah. Speaking of Mr. Ed, I just know Alan Young, who was in the Mr. Ed series, he's, he'd, he'll be 100 this year if he's still alive. Really? Alan Young, born November 19th, 1919. And it doesn't say he's dead. No, but this thing's old, so he could be dead. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'll find out for you any second here. Uh, let me see here. Let me go to IMDb, and then I go up to Alan Young. I think he's dead. I think it was a few years ago. Okay, he's not going to make a hundred. Let me see then. here. Alan Young. Here we go. Uh... Come on. There we go. Alan Young died 2016. He was well, made 90, he, 97. That's 96. Bad. 96. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, who else did I hear was really old lately? Um, God, I'm trying to remember. You know, we got Kirk Douglas at 103. Um, yeah, it's unbelievable, yeah. 103. And I've got his, uh, I got his real name here, too. It was a Jewish name. Iser Danielovich. Danielovich. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, um, it, you know, that was the biggest shock to me when I found out years ago that um, he was um, Jewish. It just because he looked so Gentile. You know what I'm saying? Does he? <laughs> it, yeah, he looked Gentile. Uh, and uh, I, I uh, never was able to, uh, you know, all of a sudden when I found out he was Jewish, I was amazed. I was just absolutely amazed. Um, so anyway, so who, who, what other names do you have? I've got uh, Edith Mariner. Edith Mariner. Well, I don't think her name was Edith on stage, and I don't think Mariner no, was her name on stage. Edith Mariner. Wow. Well, come on. What? Who is that? Susan Hayward. Oh, well, I, that would have taken me forever. That would have taken me well. Okay, this is a big shock. Because most people, li most people listening to us right now don't even know who Susan Hayward was. <laughs> okay, how about... Uh, Margarita Cancino. Oh, wait a minute. I know that. I know that. Oh, God. Very hot. Yeah. Oh, God. I know that. Okay, tell me. But I'm going to go. A lot of husbands. A lot of husbands. A lot of husbands. Rita Hayworth. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Yep. You'll know this. Paul Rubenfeld. Paul Rubenfeld. Well, that would be Paul Rubens. Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, yeah, that'd be Paul Rubens. Oh, they got him. It says Paul Rubenfeld here. 
No, but what I'm saying, Paul Rubens was Paul Rubenfeld. Okay. Paul Rubens was Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is a Doris von Koppelhoff. That was Doris Day. Correct. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tom, this is a, a big star, mm -hmm. Thomas Map, Map, M A P O T H E R, the fourth. Wow, Tom Cruise. Bingo. Really? Yeah, you nailed it. Wow, because I just went by the Tom. Really? Well, but I figured that since name. this was an older. old, this, since this was an old book, it might not have Tom Cruise in there. You know. Wow. Declan McManus? Oh, uh, that, that Declan McManus was, um, is that Elvis Costello? Bingo. Mm -hmm. Two for two. Yeah. Howard Cohen? Howard Cohen. Yeah, boy. Howard Cosell? Right again. Son of a <laughs> bitch. <on> fire. <laughs> and I didn't know that. You know, it's just that when somebody goes Howard Cohen and he wants to change his name, he may pick the f same first letter. So he doesn't have to, you know, change the embroidery on his linen. He doesn't know. have to change the towels. <laughs> uh, let's, I just saw a movie with this guy that was shot in San Francisco in 1950, Leo Jacoby. Leo Jacoby was Leo Jacoby, wasn't he? Lee J. Cobb. Oh, Lee J. Cobb. So that, oh, yeah, he really, that's he really played the name there, huh? Yeah, yeah. He just took the eye off, but he went Lee J. Cobb. Yeah. Yeah. That's J pretty cool. Wow. Now, a lot of people don't know who Lee J. Cobb is. You know, we're, we're well, I, we like the old movies, so uh, he was, uh, I would say he was a pretty good actor, wasn't he? Well, you know something? I got to tell you, I was watching, um, I was watching TCM last night. And they were running a movie by Walt Disney called Fun and Fancy Free. This was one of the features he put out where he would have like two different stories in the movie because then he could make them faster by having two, two units create the cartoons. And uh, they had Bongo the Bear, the story of Bongo the Bear. He was a circus bear who somehow winds up in the wild and falls in love with this other female bear. And I remember as a child having the record of that. They put out a record. I think Capitol put out a record of Bongo the Bear. And so I'm sitting there singing with all the songs. I still remember it from being a child. Now, nobody here probably who's listening to me remembers Walt Disney's Fun and Fancy Free. You know. Uh, these stories have been, like, cut out and put into separate things, like Mickey and the Beanstalk, which is one of the stories. Has usually just been run on like you know, Disney's Wonderful World or whatever, but so so when I think of stuff that I saw as a child and every now and then it comes back in one form or another, man, do I suddenly get what's the word I'm looking for? Um, nostalgic, you know, nostalgic. For, for the day, you know. Anyway, give me one more name. Let's see if we can come up with it. Okay, uh, let's. Let's see, uh, Henry John Deutschendorf. Oh, Jesus. I have no no idea. John Denver. Really? Well, I wouldn't care anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I always he was, thought... I he always, was huge in the 70s. But though, I remember? always thought he was so fucking mediocre. How know? did he get so huge, though? I don't know, you know. But uh, he uh, he certainly did. I mean, he, but he wrote just I don't know, insipid songs. I just I didn't, couldn't stand him. He was yeah. Well, give me a, give me one more. I think we got time for one more. Do we have time for one more? Yeah, we got a minute and thirty seconds left here. Give me give me one more. Okay, uh, Bernadette Lazaro. Oh boy, uh, I'm gonna try Bernadette Peters. You're right. Son of a bitch. Yeah, you're now, good I, on these. I, I, but, but you see, I didn't know that. I just Bernadette, and I'm figuring who would change her name to something simple. And I'm thinking Bernadette Peters, and I threw it out there going, oh, well, you're wrong, Alex. You know, But I was right, huh? 
<laughs> Winona Horowitz. <laughs> Winona Horowitz is uh, Winona Ryder. Right. From from Petaluma, California. You're correct. Yes. Winona Horowitz. And and believe me, she would have never been a big star with that name. <laughs> Those are the days when they said, too Jewish, too Jewish, you know. So. Anyway, hey, listen, good talking to you again, my friend. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed that you're, you got like four out of five of these names. You're hitting 80%. Yeah, and they were all guesses. That was the funny part about it. I mean, Tom Cruise, I just took a, just a stab in the dark on that one. That was a good one. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, he'll be back next week, I'm sure. His name is Larry yes, Bubbles if, Brown. If we both survive, I'll be back. Still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that was Bubbles. That was our good friend Larry Bubbles Brown. Let me see here. Let me get the, uh, let me get the Skype line started. I would start them early, but uh, people have a tendency to call even when there's no little green light on. So, uh, And the new Skype doesn't, uh, if you put it on like invisible, it it's just looks invisible, but it isn't invisible. Uh, oh, let's see here. It says, uh, I got some, we have some new no things here. It says search for someone and start chatting or go to contacts and see who's available. Well, I don't really want to do that, okay? I just want to take your calls, and that's it. All right? Okay. By the way, how do you... I've been working on this. This is, this is a work in progress. So, oh, wait a minute. Let me see here. Here comes Jeff Stein. Hold on a second, Jeff. I just want to show people. This is a work in progress, folks. So uh, <laughs> I just want you to see that, you know. Uh, it's still got some little problems, but I like the way it looks, so... Anyway, let me see here. Jeff Stein, let me see. here. Here's the first caller tonight. Gee, we don't have Phil for the rest of the week. That's, That's uh, true. Hmm? That's true. No Phil. No Phil. It'll be a Phil-free week. Is That's what, right. or, or a filthy week, something like that. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Let me push that button, and there we go. Oh, wait a minute. There are two of you. Oh, that's because you were on the other. You, you were there last night on that one. So let me take him at Charlie Wallace sure. and put Charlie in the place where we see an, another um, uh, 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 Jeff, oh. uh, Jeff, wait a minute, hold on a second. Jeez, almighty, please, oh, Jesus. Oh, this whole thing is like <laughs> fucking up on me. Um, and I don't want That's to- okay. That's where I was last night. Huh? That's where I was last and night. No, but I want to. I want to go take this down here, and go down here like that. And then I want to take this. Oh boy! I just, I just have been. I just. Oh, just. Oh, that really fucked me up now. <laughs> oh, Jesus Almighty! I, I give up. I give up on this. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, that'll, that'll take it for the time being. Let me move this down there we go okay now let me there we go we got charlie there but what we have is we have uh um uh jeff in two spots there we don't want jeff in two spots as much as we like you jeff let me turn up the air conditioner i turned it down and now i'm sweating because i had all this work to do um this is like a whole different thing that i'm trying to Hold on a second. There we go. That's better. That's better. Hold on, folks. While I get things done here. Um, no, I don't. No, no. That, oh, that, that uh, fucked me over. Oh, boy. Um, I don't understand now. I don't understand how you get these things. No, no. I don't want to do that. Well, hold on, folks. I'm, I'm having some kind of problems here. Talk among yourselves, would you? Okay. Yeah, that would be really nice if you would. Uh, there we go. Ah, there we go. All right. And, uh, huh? I've see. had kind of a lost day. You, you've had kind of a lost day? Why have you had kind of a lost day? I've been working on umpire stuff literally since I got up this morning. Oh, really? So I haven't seen any news or anything. 
Son of a bitch. So you've been you've been working your ass off, huh? Yeah. Wow. My part time job. <clears throat> there we go. I'm. You know what happened is my OBS just the whole the whole scheme screwed up on me, and I I'm 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 slowly getting it back together, folks. Here we go. No, that's not it. So Charlie, did did you were you actually an engineer at one time? No, no, I was a computer analyst. Hmm. Uh, my degrees are in astrophysics, but I ended up working as a computer an analyst. Yeah. Now, let me see here. Why is this? Um, I'm looking in. Oh, okay. All right. We're, we're a pretty now. smart group, you know. It, what? We often have a pretty smart group. Yes, we yeah. do. We do. And we could use with some more callers uh, as well. Notice my hat here today? My new hat? <coughs> Oh, 1939. <laughs> yeah. I have a I have a birthday coming up, so I figured I, they I, some, somehow I, I uh, Amazon knew my age, and yeah. I got I got put you know put in charge of this. So mm -hmm. so I decided I bought a shirt too. I have a shirt that says uh, yeah. made, made in 1939 or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, how are you guys doing tonight? Well. Today was 9-11. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, it didn't happen again, did it? No. Oh, okay. All right. So we'll I wouldn't know. On. Okay, here comes Ray Renati. I wonder if he's on a bicycle or something tonight. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, he's, he's walking. He's walking yeah. tonight. Let's see here. Hey, we'll put him in the first spot uh -oh. there. Uh, come on, Ray. Let's see here. Ray Renati. Hey. Yeah. Gumba, gumbo, 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 Goomba. Goomba, Goomba. Goomba, something like that. There we go. All right, there we go. Okay, now there we go. And where are you walking tonight? Out to the bay. Yeah. Every night. Yeah. You, you have to take a walk during our show, or take a bike ride, or to be at the gym. Yeah, because my 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 clock, my inner clock is all screwed up because I end up, I go to bed so late. Why are you going to bed so late? Um, well, it's usually like uh, like when I have rehearsal for night after night, and I get home like after eleven, mm -hmm. I can't sleep, and then I get in this habit where my where I can't go to sleep early because I don't get tired, and then it, yeah. it's really hard for me to get back. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I you know I don't know my sleeping habits are just really. I did something. I was really worried about myself the other day because I usually I get about seven, eight hours sleep. You know, uh, I like to get eight because with eight I feel somewhat rested. I don't never feel rested anymore. Um, and um, the other day I slept for nine and a half hours, and that worried me. You know, like why am I why 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 nine and a half hours? You ever have that happen, Jeff? Where you sleep that yeah. long? Yeah. And I didn't take any pills or anything. You know, I take a little. I smoke a little of that uh, vape pot every night before I go to sleep, so that I eventually can get lung problems and die. Mm -hmm. Do you think everybody's overreacting to the vape pens? No. You don't. I, th I think they are because what I've read is most of them have been from illegal state where it's illegal yeah. and they're getting these pens off the street. They're not getting the ones that are manufactured by reputable companies. And I'll turn off my mic because it's mute. It's noisy here. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, I just think it's one of those things that uh, the, the press suddenly jumps on and it becomes a big deal. But how many people have died as a result of these things? And do we know for sure that's what they died from? You know, yeah. I mean, I'm not here to defend. I think it's been four. Huh? I think there have been four. Four deaths? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Out of how many people that are vaping? Millions. Millions. Yeah. So what, you know, I mean, yes, there could be some coincidence that these uh, vaping with these people and their biological makeup uh, killed them. But we and we should find out why. But there is so much illegal stuff going on out there. Kids are getting like illegal uh, 
pot, you know, vaping for vaping. Uh, and, and you don't know what they put in there. They say there's, there are other adulterants in them. So, you know, this is what happens when you don't really control a industry, you know. Uh, and then you have all these uh, other actors coming in and creating product for that. And look what happens, you know. Well, I've said what I have to say tonight. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you think that anybody was ever going to come and uh, standardize pot? Well, I don't think, you know, pot is pretty hard to standardize. I mean, unless somebody puts adulterants in it, it's just a weed that grows out of the ground that is then cultivated and then it is, uh, it is dried and it's cured and then it's sold. You know, it's, it's a purely organic product unless you get into the area where you're making uh, vaping fluid and things like that, in which case you're changing the nature of the, of the, of the uh, liquid, as it were, or the, of, the, of the pot. But pot on its own is just it's purely, you know, you can grow it in your backyard and smoke it. Sometimes it's not going to be very good, but, you know, you can do that, you know, so... Um, what happened was with marijuana over the years, you had these people who were really good at uh, at cultivating it, and so pot got stronger and stronger and stronger. I mean, I remember when you used to buy Jamaican weed and would have to smoke like a spleef that was this thick in order to get high, you know. <laughs> and then they started coming out with this California stuff, and uh, eventually the pot pretty strong now. Much stronger than it was when I when I was a boy, you know, and I was using it. I'll never forget the first time I ever smoked it. My uh, wife, Ronnie, at the time, had this uh, hairdresser who was willing to sell her some pot, and she said, "Would you like to try it?" Because I think she had already, and I said, "Yeah, but you know, I hear that it leads to other things." Oh God. And she says, ah, that's, that's, that's bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. So we went out and we got this pot, right? And I smoked it and I got it, I was halfway home and you know, when you, when you smoke it the first time, you don't really know how to control it. And I had to have her drive me the rest of the way home. I just couldn't. And I kind of liked what it did and everything. And I said, gee, we should get some more of this. So I went to her hairdresser and said, hey, you got any more of that stuff? And he said, sure. By the way, would you like to buy some heroin? Yeah. And I went, Jesus Christ, this is like everything I was told about this drug. It was, it's a gateway drug. He's now trying to get me on heroin. So I didn't buy from him anymore. But I didn't stop smoking pot either. In fact, I started doing LSD. Um, and how I started doing LSD is, uh, is interesting in that I had interviewed um, uh, Timothy Leary. Uh, he had come to Houston, and I interviewed him. And I started, you know, asking him stuff. And I just, you know, being the talk show host, and I was not the kind of politically hip guy that I became, uh, so I was out to, like, put this guy in his place, right? And he put me in my place. I mean, I just... You know, I was like putty in his hands after about 15 minutes. And um, after it was all over, I said to my wife, I said, we got to try this shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we found some LSD. And we tried it. And I, I guess I took maybe 10, 15 trips after that, maybe more. I can't remember. Uh... Uh, and uh, it, it, was, uh, it was an interesting drug. I thought it was, if you used it for, you know, good purposes, which was it was a good psychotropic drug, you could do your own psychoanalysis with the damn stuff, you know. And so it solved a lot of problems for me. Didn't last all my life because I've got most of those problems back again, but, you know, at the time it cured me of my hypochondria. Well, you see how long it lasted. <laughs> you know. So anyway, that was 
that was the maybe it's time to buy some more LSD. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this is many years ago, but anyway. Uh, so we had some pot in the house and this and that, and we went up in Massachusetts, and I'm trying to remember where it was, mm -hmm. but it was where they had classical music. Uh -huh. And we're going with, with Pam and her parents. Uh -huh. And one of the things that uh, you, you, you sat on the grass and you bring your own food and you listen to the music and all that stuff. So I kind of decided that uh, it would be a good thing if we could improve the, the uh, salad and, uh, with, uh, with a little pot. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother-in-law, who's now 85, <laughs> she said that at this time, she's not 85, man, but she goes, your salad is absolutely the best. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it made a, a long, boring day a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so is anybody else going to call? Come on, let's fill up this citizen panel here. I, I don't feel like uh, just having three people. I like to have five, four or five, six sometimes it makes a nice yeah. little uh, yeah, and yesterday, discussion. Yesterday you had a full uh, group. You, you, last night was very interesting because we yeah. got into uh, truckers. And um, uh, it was, uh, it was, it, I thought it was a very good show, you know. Um, yeah, I was interested in the truck. Yeah, and all. yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, um, I have nothing to talk about unless you want to get back to the old topic. Yes, uh, Ray. Yeah, just a couple things. Uh, one, regarding pot, like, when I use a vape, vaporize it. I mean, regular pot in a vaporizer, mm. it makes me feel really awful. And when I smoke it, 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 it has the effect I'm looking for. And I can't figure out what, what the hell is going on there. Uh, so well, strange. It's definitely a different chemistry. It, it changes the chemistry when you vape it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, so I, I, for some reason, it doesn't agree with me. The smoking just. It feels good. The vaping, I just feel like crap. Have you have you tried buying the cartridges? I've done both. Uh -huh. I've had the cartridges. When I vape the regular marijuana, just like makes me feel lousy. But if I smoke it, I feel good. We well, see. I have. Uh -huh. uh, we have a vape. We have a vape, and we yeah. have some cartridges that go in it that are flavored. Yeah, I have that fl too. flavored, and I don't like the flavor. That I find to be a little on the obnoxious side, you know. Um, yeah. But, but um, um, it it, it uh, the flavor kind of like turns me off, kind of, you know. Um, yeah. I don't know how you feel about that. But well, mine is I don't have the flavored one. I just have regular. It just tastes like regular. Yeah. 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 So anyway, hello, um, Tony. By the way, yeah. Uh, uh, I had another thing about the truck driver. I was listening to this when I when I lost my signal. I kept listening. Mm -hmm. the truck trucking thing with the tires that blow up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about ten years ago, I have a really good friend. She she was an avid motorcyclist. She was passing in Arizona a truck where the tire blew up, and it hit her, and got knocked her off the bike. The truck ran over her. It was an eighteen wheeler. Jesus. And she and she was wearing leathers. But she forgot to zip the jacket to the pants, and it pulled the pants off. And uh, not only did she get all kinds of internal organ injuries, but it took all the skin off her legs. Oh, and uh, she spent two years in the hospital in a burn center. Um, mm. It was horrible. Yeah, and they shouldn't use those retreads. Did she sue? Just, did she sue? I didn't. I don't know. I bet I if know. she didn't, she was out of her mind. I'm sure she did. I, I never asked her. I, no one talked to her about that. They were just glad she was alive, and because she had to fight her way back to life. I mean, it was too amazing. Like, 
It's mm-hmm. like having severe burns over almost all your body. <clears throat> because in a yeah. very legal way, that's, that's, that's you know, that's, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, da- a lot of damage is there for causing yeah. pain and suffering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it aged her like crazy. I mean, she looks so much older than she did before it happened. Wow. <laughs> but, um, you know, she's doing... Fine now, but what was, was it? A, many, many, many years. Was it a regular mm-hmm. bicycle or was it a motorcycle? Shoot. Motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. See? But it could have been a bicycle. I mean, good thing it was a motorcycle in a way because she did have some protection on. Yeah, I think yeah. A bicycle would have done her in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just uh, anyway, I just I, I'm I'm against retread. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it, uh, uh, is there any law against retreads? That, 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 that? I, I don't know. Maybe it depends on, maybe it's different from state to state. I don't know. Because if you ever dr- drove across the United States, the most constant thing you see in, on the road are pieces of tire. Yes. Yeah, sure. You know, you but see- I have to say, in California, maybe they changed the law because in California, I, have not th- I haven't seen them in a long time, and I used to see them all the time. So maybe in California they're not legal anymore. Maybe they don't. don't do know. they allow retreads in California? Maybe not. That could well be, because I mean, there's, yeah. you know, but when you're talking about a truck, you're talking about these tires, which how much do they weigh for crying out loud? You know. Yeah. And if one of those things blow, and then the thing's a retread, and it slaps off like it did with your friend, look at what it did to her. Two years in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All kinds of surgery, skin grafts, on and on. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, yeah. yeah. did you drive to Florida? What? No. Did you drive from California to Florida? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, turn your mic off there, Ray, when you're not talking. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I drove from, uh, we drove from California to, um, to, um, uh, Florida, uh, and uh, it was a nice trip. You know, uh, the best part was New Orleans. Had some yeah. good eating there. Uh, yeah. It was a great story on that. I, uh, we, were, we, we, we pull into New Orleans, and my then girlfriend, Xanthi, says, well, you know, we really got to go to, we really got to go to, like, Paul Prudhomme's restaurant, which was called <laughs> J. Paul. Um, and they had a lunch there upstairs uh, where you could buy food for lunch. And it was cheaper than if you bought the dinner. Oh, look at that. Look at that fucking mm-hmm. sunset there. Oh, uh, <laughs> boy, do I There you go. California sunset. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Anyway, anyway, so uh, we go to Shea Paul, and they have lunch. And, and the lunch is kind of cheaper than the dinner. The dinner you, you couldn't get into for months. I mean, it's it's... You know, it, it had a waiting list a mile long, but you could go upstairs during the day. And you know, so we're there and we're eating, and the food's great. And, you know, we're eating the jambalaya and we're eating the etouffee and all this kind of crap. And my girlfriend says to me, um, I wonder if, the, uh, if, if, if Paul Prudhomme is here. I said, Come on. You know, he's so well known that uh, I don't think he's probably been here for, you know, years. <laughs> you know, I, maybe he steps in, in the place every now and then. And, and so uh, she says, yeah, I guess. And then we're starting to get ready to leave, and she says to the, um, to the um, uh, uh, waitress, uh, by the way, uh, do you have any, like, menus that I can, uh, I can uh, menu I can take with me as kind of a souvenir? And she says, sure, uh, we have a menu you can use. Um, um, let me see here. I don't see any of these other people. Here's Hog Rider. Well, there's Hog Rider. He's already there. But I don't see where Michael is. Uh, oh, here it is. Here he is. There we go. Do I have my camera on? Uh-huh. What? There we go. Yeah, you have there your you camera go. on. Okay. So we got to go to six for you because we because oh, full moon. Kevin automatically signed in. There's Mike. Okay. Anyway, so she says to the uh, to the woman, to the waitress, hey, "Can I have a menu, kind of as a souvenir of the place?" She says, "Fine." She said, "Would you like to have the chef sign it for you?" 
And she said, sure. And she said, well, he's downstairs, and there's a trailer downstairs, and he's in the trailer. <laughs> so I figure, you know, it's got to be the chef, the guy who cooks in the place, because Prudhomme is never there, right? We go down to this trailer, which is in the basement of, uh, of, of, of Chez Paul's, walk in, and there is Paul Prudhomme, I swear to you, mixing up spices. Holy moly, the owner. Yeah, yeah. And so he, like, was really nice, signed the thing. He talked to us for a while. And I reminded him that he had actually been on my show in San Francisco, where he came mm. by and cooked breakfast for our audience, for our studio audience. Uh, and uh, but he was there, and when we walked out, she looked at me and went, "Yeah, like he never comes in the place, you know." Ah. So it, was, it was fun. It was really fun. Uh, but uh, that, that, that's what happened on the way to Florida, and then we got to Miami, and it was the worst three months of my life. It was mm -hmm. like it was like living in hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was there at the same time. Were you? Were you? You did. You didn't listen to me, did you? Yes, I did. You did. Yeah. Oh, what a horrible, horrible <laughs> situation. Was the show any good? I don't remember. Uh the show is fine, but you were pissed off at the, and the, and the guy who was, I don't know, what do you want to call it? He was running the show or whatever. He was a prick. What, oh, you mean the guy, who, the other talk show host? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he kind of had this attitude, like he ran the whole place. Well, he did. Yeah. You know, this was uh, what was his name? I can't remember his name now. I, you know, I'm I'm I, I'm bad with names, uh, but he was the biggest, literally the biggest radio personality in Miami. In fact, yeah. When I left, he got a contract to go to another radio station for a million dollars a year. <laughs> you know, and um, this guy just hated me, and I don't know why, because I saved his life. Oh, that's the guy who had a heart attack, right? He, he comes in one morning, and he goes, you know, during a break, he says to me, boy, I don't know, I couldn't sleep last night, and now my, my arm is numb, and I said, I think you better go to a hospital right now, and he went to the hospital, and he was having a heart attack. He was having... Was yeah. he overweight? Hmm? What? Was he overweight? No, no. Neil Rogers. Was Neil Rogers was his name. Oh, Neil Rogers. Rogers. He has since died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, I saved the fucking guy's life, and he still hated me. You know. <laughs> he, 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 he must be a major. He didn't like. I him. mean, you he'd have a soft spot a little bit. What? You think he'd have a soft? Oh, Neil Rogers but never I had a soft spot. Him. This was the biggest prick I ever met in my life. You know, when he dropped dead, he's one of the few people I said, thank God. You know? <laughs> That's like a happy funeral. Yeah. Oh. He's gone. <laughs> ungrateful like my bastard. Family. Ungrateful I can't wait bastard. to hear those funerals. <laughs> yeah, ungrateful bastard. You ungrateful bastard. <laughs> ungrateful bastard. There's some funerals I can't wait to go to, just so I can be happy. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, uh, Neil, and Neil Rogers made yeah. my life a living I'm, hell down there, sure. you know, so, you know, and it, it didn't help that, you know, I had Penn Jillette on my show for the first week that I was on down there, and, and, and Penn decided to go after him, Yeah, <laughs> and he had this dog who got sick because he ate a frog. He ate a frog? He's yeah. doing Neil Rogers? Yeah. Yeah, he ate a dog. Um, ate a frog. Oh ate a God. frog, and it was like a poisonous frog. So they had to do all kinds of things to save the dog's life. And Penn kept referring to it as his toad-sucking dog. <laughs> 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 and that did not make me very popular, you know. The dog is who ate the frog? Yeah. Anyway. Imagine shitting a frog out. That would be funny. How does it come out? I, I don't know. I, I think they had to go in and get it or something, you know. Oh, oh well, you, you know, that. dogs eat stuff like that. Dogs will eat anything. Dogs eat their own shit for crying out loud. My <laughs> dog. You, you're breaking up on us. You're breaking up on us like crazy for some reason. 
Are you? Get, hey, doesn't eat frogs. Move, move yourself closer to your Wi-Fi. Okay. I think that's oh, what you. Is think, that me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I go in the other room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And get, we can also not have to see that hideous wallpaper. Um, <laughs> hey, Michael. What's the dog's name? How you doing, Alex? What's the dog's name again? Penny. Penny? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no no frogs here. No frogs here. Don't let her lick your face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I've, I've had women who are much more diseased lick my face. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you any of you watch America's Got Talent, but Simon Cowell invented the show. Right. And I saw a documentary uh, on game shows like that. And he was being interviewed, and he said, the reason I started America's Got Talent, and by the way, it started here, and then he did Britain's Got Talent because they didn't want to put it on in Britain, but then when it was successful here, they put it on over there. And now it's in like 50 different countries all around the world. But he said, I started it because I wanted to find the world's greatest dog act. He said, I love dogs, and I, you know, I, I'm looking for the world's greatest dog act. So in the British version of Britain's Got Talent, the champions last week, they had a dog act on from Germany in which there are about eight dogs, nine dogs, and they're all in perfect synchronization, and it's this young girl, she's like 13, who trained these dogs. And Cowell just said, that's the best dog act I've ever seen in my life. And it was amazing. I hope they get it over, get her over here because that dog act was just, you sat there and you went, what? How'd she get the train like this? You know, now we can't well, see Tony, but that's okay too. There was a, there was a dog act that the one America's got talent. It was like the second or third one, wasn't it? Yeah. This year they had a dog. Every year he has a dog act of some sort. A few years ago on Britain's Got Talent, there was this dog that won that was so popular. Uh, Pud Pudsy was the dog's name, and they made him Pudsy movie. Oops, yeah, well, so the popular. one the 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 one that won here in America's Got Talent. I ran into that trailer out on I five. I stopped at the rest stop, mm -hmm. and the truck pulled in, and the fucking dogs were all screaming, and they let him out to go shit, you know, at the rest stop, and yeah, and I got to see them all. And, it was pretty funny. It was it was some foreign couple. Really? Wow. Yeah. Well, it this, was pretty the, funny. This act from <laughs> Germany that they had on was just spectacular. Just spectacular. You know, she got the, all the dogs, about eight of them, to do a conga line. That's one, yeah. you know, one <laughs> an, All of them holding each other's hips and walking around. Called a train. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you know, usually when you have a dog act, sometimes they do something and the dog doesn't do exactly what you want it to do, and you got to kind of make up for it and so on. In this case, uh, th these dogs were all in perfect sync. They never went out of sync, and they all were on. They all had these little pedestals that they were standing on when the act started, like it was a circus. And when they were through doing their bit, they would jump back up on the pedestal. You know, some amazing stuff. Just amazing stuff. Well, there's uh, there, we're getting uh, we're getting um, moonlight in California. Uh, boy, it sure gets dark fast when you're walking, Ray. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's also because the the iPhone camera compensates for the low light. It makes it look lighter than it is. But then when it's and then when it's dark, it's dark. Yeah. And then it can't do it. Have, yet. You, have you seen the new? Uh, have, you, have you seen the new iPhone? I am so excited no. about that iPhone. I wish I could afford one. Well, uh, I'm going to buy one. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I'm going to buy one, but I have to wait for my current phone to expire. And then I can either trade it in and, you know, get it cheaper every month than, than the other yeah, one. Yeah, they give you 400 bucks for an iPhone 10. Well, that's if you go to Apple. But if you do right. a deal with uh, AT&T, I think there's a... There's a better deal all the way around. Anyway, right. the point is, Brit oh sorry. What I suddenly realized is, uh, Apple has quit making telephones. 
it's not like they held this thing and said, we have a new iPhone, and boy, the sound is clearer than it's ever been before. Uh, boy, this phone uh, can, you know, it can pick up a signal where there's hardly any signal. There was none of it's that a shit. a camera with a phone attached. No, exactly. Telephone <laughs> technology has the, not changed that much in the past several years. So, well, you no, know, the it, 5G it, it, it is, is the only thing It, it has changed. 5G, I mean, but also, I mean, come on. Uh, improve the uh, the uh, I, uh, the iPod inside the iPhone because I use it for listening to music, you know. Yeah, I like I use it too but, for music. But too. everything that they were doing on this promotion yesterday was watch what this camera will do. Look how good this camera is. Look, we blew up this picture. You can see every eyelash on this woman. Blah 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 blah. blah. And I'm going, you're not selling phones anymore. You're selling fucking yeah. cameras. Well, they're trying to catch up with Google and the Pixel because they had the best camera, so they had to make a better camera than Google. Well, apparently it looks like they have. They have in the, in the, in the mid-range uh, iPhone, they have three lenses. And so yeah. you, have, you have a... Uh, a, a what well, that's you, the higher range. Yeah, you have, yeah, but you have a really wide-angle lens, which I love. Uh, and... Uh, uh, then a wide angle, and then a uh, what do you call it? A uh, telephoto. Telephoto. And uh, you can do a slow fee. <laughs> and you can do a slow fee. Yeah, you can <laughs> slow motion selfie. Uh, but they got. A, they have a 4K selfie camera now. Yeah. So I mean, it. You know, I mean, it. it what but What got me was it's no longer. They're not selling a phone anymore. You know, they're selling the. Uh, uh, they're selling the, the uh, camera. And I was thinking about it, you know, and if you buy this top of the line, this middle line one, I think it's something like 900 bucks or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe it's less. There's 699, 999, and 1,000, I think. 1,099. 1,099, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't want that one, it's too big. Uh, but it. Uh, I was thinking about it, and a few years back, I bought Marjorie a Nikon that doesn't have the resolution this does, and I paid twelve hundred for it, thirteen hundred dollars for it. So really, I mean, they're throwing a lot of stuff in there, you know. Yeah, but it's kind of a joke to say it's official cinematic, or you know, that they, they, they that demo they did when they hired. These professional cinematographers, you know, mm -hmm. they had a hundred thousand dollar budget for the lighting for the crew. Right. You know, it's just you know to catch capture the image is not the hard part. You know. Right. Yeah. So Apple will then start selling lighting <laughs> and <laughs> chroma chroma keys. And do you have your hand up, Ray, or is it? Ray? I do. Yeah. I do because I wanted to. I, I, um, my cousin is shooting this low, low budget film, mm -hmm. and so I have a better phone than him because that's all we could use. And I used my iPhone in the highest capacity. What is that? Uh, 4K. For the, yeah, 4K at 60 frames per minute. Mm -hmm. And I put an external mic, and um, two, two of the, three of the clips were fine when I had the mic set up for. Uh, uh, um, in one way, and when I set up the mic another way, all I did was turn the thing and make it 120 degrees. Mm -hmm. All the clips were completely out of sync by 30 seconds. And, uh, and to get those clips onto my computer literally took 30-something hours. That, and that, then yeah, I had to run it through this program that some French guy made called Handbrake to get everything to sync. I mean, it took me, it took me upwards of 50 hours of computing time. Well, think of all the time. money you saved on camera rentals. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I, but I'll say something too. When you when you zoom in uh, on a face or something, it's not it's not the quality that you get out of a real camera. The, the, it, there's well, it, there was pixelation. Uh, it's just not it, it's just not the same. Well, it's Whoa. not it's not the same, but it is certainly uh, acceptable. I mean, I I I, it I, is. I have shot I shot a va my vacation trip a few years ago in 4K using <clears throat> my iPhone, and the yeah. quality was just breathtaking. But you're right; it yeah. takes forever to upload those onto the, onto your uh, computer. 
And most people go, well, well, I don't do that. Well, yes, but I do because I edit in Final Cut Pro and things like that. And, yeah. and you know, even if you bring it in through Final Cut Pro, it takes forever. Yeah. I mean, we, the same thing here. I had to because he's trying to make a movie. So, I mean, uh, yeah. I had to get the files off my phone. It was not easy, I'll tell you. No, if I'm And there was a special setting in deep within the settings of the iPhone that I finally found the solution to. It took me hours. Somebody, I can't even remember what it was, but you have to change something of the way it handles pictures or it will crash in the, uh, like in the middle of uploading your second file. Well, what, uh, what, uh, what, what iPhone do you have? Uh, 10R. The 10R. That's the cheaper yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah, they, they, uh, they don't really put all the bells and whistles on there. I have just the iPhone X, which was the first X they brought yeah. out. Okay. And it does pretty well. That's you what know, I have. But, but I can shoot better with my GoPro. Okay, yeah. and if I'm going to go to Europe or someplace like that and I want to shoot there, I'm just going to get a regular camera because I want the zoom capability, the smooth zoom capability. And stuff. Well, I think my problem was I put an external mic that wasn't totally compatible. Um, yeah, so. but I'll tell you, the new GoPro, uh, the Steadicam on the GoPro, it's like uh, it's like having a Steadicam. It's, it's oh, smooth. really? It's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. smooth. Because I don't even use my old GoPro because the batteries wear out so fast. By the time I'm about, I charge the battery, I go to use it, the battery's already dead. The, the new batteries so, uh, don't die as fast. The new batteries don't uh, die as fast. And, uh, how, much is, how much is one of those GoPros cost? Uh, and I can't stand not being able to see what I'm shooting. Yeah. You, do the new ones have a, oh, a yeah. viewer? Oh, yeah. They have all come with a viewer on the back. I think it's oh, 450 okay. Jeff. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What 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 version are they on now? Well, actually, there's a 300. Uh, 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 you know, I I don't know what they're on now, but I got the one that when they went to the uh, steady, really steady, cam version. Uh, that's the latest one that I bought, and I'll tell you that thing is just smooth as, as silk. You know. Yeah. I, I think awesome. they got like five and they got five black and silver and all that you know, yeah yeah it's this thing here wait a minute hold on uh, this is the right way to go then yeah, it's my right. gopro kit um and it's uh you know i mean to me it's it's a very simple camera to use the only thing is is that it doesn't have zoom you know, and it doesn't uh, have well, all those. The whole idea of 4K is that you can zoom in on the on the. Uh, well, you could do HD. Yeah, but but uh, but uh, this is the uh, you know that's yeah. it. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, that's yeah. all I need to do. And. Um, I, I Which that. one's that, Mike? This is the latest one. I I don't remember the number, but it's the 4K. Oh, it's yeah. seven. It's the uh, seven. Here, here uh, by the way, yeah. Ray. Uh, Ray. See, yeah. See the, yeah. Can you see the. the Viewfinder. In the oh, middle. that's nice. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, it's really see, good. I'm gonna get yeah, one I of those. I bought this on Amazon. This kit, you know, yeah. that has all every adapter for every possible crazy situation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Including, you know, water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it, you know, and I'll tell you what I did have. Or where, where is it? Is it out? I don't know where it is now. Um, oh yeah. Wait a minute. Is that it? I, I don't know where it is. I have to go find it. Oh, yeah. Here was b b to get smooth pictures. Uh, you know, there's been a thing. There's a thing in movies called the Steadicam. And what it was is it's a thing that you put on your cam you attach your camera to, and it has what's called a gimbal. And then yeah, it I keeps have a gimbal. Thing steady. But here's what I bought. This is my old GoPro. This... <laughs> Was replaced just by by this, I the, you know yeah you have one too, yeah that's, that's the uh, what what do, what do they call it There was a name for it C H I Y U N it, it comes to life, you know. Oh, what's cool about this is that you can control the iPhone zoom and lenses with remotely. Oh, oh is that this. is oh is that an eye for an iPhone? <laughs> huh? Is that for an iPhone? Kevin had the same one. Huh? <laughs> One. Yeah. So you have the one for the iPhone? Because I was thinking about getting that. No, this is this was made especially for the GoPro by the GoPro people. 
This will work oh, with the GoPro or an iPhone. Let me see here. Turn, oh, cool. Turn off, will you? What is that oh, called? Wait. Hold on a second. Here. Z-H-I-Y-U-N. It's the smooth, Kevin, it's the smooth. Yeah, they call it a smooth, smooth, uh, smooth shot. Exact each shot, each shot. Ah, uh, that's what yeah. I want. Yeah, that's that, 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 that's. It's that, like a hundred and that, thirty for, bucks. That's for an iPhone. I think that's they're for, cheaper than that. I think I got this a fifty nine <clears throat> or seventy. You see how it has a zoom and a focus wheel here? Yeah. Is that for the iPhone? Yeah. Well, how does yeah. it zoom? It, it uses it, it uses Bluetooth and then it controls the zoom on the iPhone. Yeah, really? you download an app. I did my mom's house. Uh, so how much does that thing, a, how much does that thing cost? Mine costs like seventy nine, I think. Oh, mm. I I got it at NAB when it first came out for one fifty. Yeah, this was just I think about three or four months yeah. ago. Three months but ago. you're right, Alex. You this know, I mean, basically is is you can throw it away because the new uh, GoPro is really great. Well, the new GoPro with the Steadicam, yeah, uh, is yeah. about four hundred dollars. The other one is a steady is a GoPro, which was four hundred bucks, and then the gimbal, the the thing they called the Karma Grip, is what it's called, was three hundred bucks. So I I invested seven hundred bucks in that camera, and this thing does the same thing. They don't need to sell those gimbals anymore. You know, they're pretty good, pretty damn good. So anyway, I, there's no zoom with the GoPro, right? No, no. Okay. Is it easier to get the video off the GoPro into your computer? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty fast. All right. Anyway, uh, 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 gee, we've had, we have more people watching us tonight, and we're not talking about anything. <laughs> you know. Well, I, I did want to mention that oh, I started great. working on the TV show Naked and Afraid this week. Oh, really? And and. Cool. It's amazing that that these contestants aren't paid anything. They do it for ego. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> do you have to go out there? there? Sorry. You don't have to go out there, do you? You do an editing. Or oh something. no, I'm 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 in the edit room. But uh, but boy, I I just can't believe that these people will put their life on the line. Literally, I mean, there's yeah. serious dangers in these jungles. So what's your job at, in the editing bay? Uh, blurring out dicks and pussies? <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> That's what he First of all, uh, we have an art, uh, a graphics department that does all the blurring. Mm -hmm. But you know, after the first day, mm -hmm. there is nothing to see here, folks, because they're just muddy, crusty. <laughs> there's not, there's no sexual but things that's how I, on that's how I, that's how I, real survival mode. That's how I Dingle always, berries. that's how I always liked my women, muddy and crusty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dingleberries like and everything. after the first day, like the first day when they take off their clothes, like, oh, she's cute. But then after a while, you know, when she, she hasn't cute. eaten and she's angry and she's got jungle bugs jumping off her and shit. Do they do you get sick? Do they ever call in sick a lot? The actors or no? They're not actors. Oh, they're not. No, no, they're no, no. no. Jungle, you can't call it. Aren't sick. you familiar with this show, Tony? Oh, you innocent child, no. you. It's like a survivor, but you're naked. Yeah, it's a naked survivor. That's a good way of yeah. describing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but oh, they're, it, they're, they're not crazy. giving any water or food. They're allowed to bring two items uh, with them. So it could be a knife or a mosquito net. They're given a flint to start a fire. They're given a pot to boil water, and that's it. I thought you were going to tell me, you gonna, you gonna tell me they're given a pot to piss days. in. You know. They drop him with a helicopter and say, see ya. <laughs> He's no door dish. <laughs> Wait, but yeah. here's the thing. Here's a the box thing. of condoms, probably. Here's the thing I found so uh, uh, ridiculous about Survivor, which wasn't a bad show, and this thing and whatever, is it's, yeah, we're going to drop these people in the jungle, and they're going to have to live on their own, and blah, 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 blah. But you've got the camera crew with them. Yeah, exactly. You, they, they must be you know, you want to talk camera about... Camera crew it's, isn't offering anything. It's, it's, it's two cameras, a sound person, and a producer. And, you know, they, they, they don't offer anything. I'm sure no, they don't. Just, I'm sure they don't offer anything, but if, if a real like a tragedy family. or something were to occur, I'm sure they would come to the rescue. Oh, absolutely. They have walkie-talkies as well to call for an emergency. Yeah. But they're in real danger. I mean, there's real alligators, real elephants, real tigers in the area. 
poisonous bugs. And My bugs. feeling yeah. is, I'm, why I'm, would you want to uh, would you want to um, um, uh, terrify uh, these animals with these naked people? <laughs> <laughs> right? Some of them are pretty ugly too. Yeah. yeah. In one episode, I Some saw a naked guy slay an, a pig. It was so bizarre. You know, and, and it's cool how they like they'll they'll strip the skin off of some animal and have to use leather to make shoes and yeah, it's crazy. Wow, I, I just I, I just I can't believe there these that this isn't for, there's no money in this. Well, I mean, yeah, uh, 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 a lot a lot of these people go on these uh, on these uh, uh, what do we call them? I mean, they, the British have a term for it: alternative uh, uh, scripted reality shows. <laughs> uh, uh, but they go on these reality shows because they feel they're they're going to become stars out of this. You know, mm. they're going to have a, a television career after this is over. And who's to say they won't? Because in a lot of cases, people have had careers after the fact. You know. But yeah. I never heard of anybody on Naked and Afraid ever <clears throat> becoming a big deal. Me neither. But there there is definitely a whole fan club for this show and uh i i just i just i mean what they go through i just i don't get it yeah you know and they and if they if they hurt themselves they're on their own unless it's a medical emergency then you know there's doctors on site that and yeah for emergencies but uh golly I don't get it, but so, so, hey, yeah, they're on, the, they're on the sixth season and they're keeping me employed, and it's a union show. Yeah. So anyway, uh, as you uh, as you know, uh, I have a, a trial coming up on this apartment. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I was supposed to have a meeting with our lawyer tomorrow to study up on it and uh, about and, what. Uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, you're going to put me on the stand, and so we have to make sure that I'm saying everything that's right and makes our case, you know. So. What's the trial about, Alex? This apartment. Yeah. What about? Oh, oh, you have you haven't been in on okay. this. Sorry, uh, but let me let me reiterate what it's about, this... just so that the people out there can have an idea of what what's happening. Uh, we um, we have this apartment that we got. And we rented it, and the guy rented it to us, and we thought he was the owner of the building, but we found out later on he was just renting like anybody else, and that he considered this a sublet. But, oh, it, was, shit. but it wasn't a sublet because what we signed was a thing that said lease, and he signed as the landlord, and we signed as the tenant, and it was for three years, which sublets aren't in New York City. You can't have a sublet that's let more than two years. And you can't charge more than you're paying for rent yourself. And he was charging us double. All wow. Right. So, uh, but what happened was, uh, all of a sudden, the guy, people who own the apartment, the landlords, said, unless you get rid of these people that are in there now and uh, take possession of that apartment again and live in it, uh, we're going to have to throw you out to this other guy, to the guy who was renting to us. So then he asked us to leave, and I said, we're not going. And before you know it, were in a legal thing. Uh, and he is uh, guilty, I think, and we believe, of a thing called illusory tenancy, which is uh, a law here in New York, where you can't, illusory tenancy is when you claim that you live in the apartment, but you're really leasing it out to other people. And you can't do that, not in a rent-stabilized apartment. So anyway, uh, th it, it, this has been going on for six years. Oh, my gosh. For six years, we haven't paid rent. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, you would think they would be wanting to get over this really fast, but no. <laughs> no, no. No such thing, you know. Um, and um, so uh, we, <laughs> we are uh, in the midst of this whole mess, really, uh, and uh, so we're having this trial coming up. And uh, it was supposed to come up on, uh, when was it? Uh, uh, two weeks from, uh, from, from, I think, last Monday. 
So the trial is not with the building owner, but it's yeah. with this landlord. No, it, the building owner and, and us are being sued by the guy who was renting the apartment. Well, that takes balls. Well, he's suing us because we stopped paying him rent. You know, he, and, he, we, and we, he wants us out of the apartment, but he can't get us out. It's Look, we, we have such a perfect case, it's ridiculous, okay? It, it's the two of them fighting with each other, really, and it's like, okay, Mom and Dad, when you decide what's happening here, let us know where the kids are going to go, you know? Uh, and we got a call. We get, I guess. I, what? Place in New York. What? It's a beautiful place. Yeah. In Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so uh, we're supposed to go to court. Well, turns out, that the guy who is representing uh, the uh, uh, the guy who was the supposed l owner of the apartment, okay, uh, his mother is having a heart operation on the day the trial starts, so they have to postpone it again. When? Till December. And I'm going, you know, will this never end? You know, <laughs> fuck off. Leave me alone. I have no need for any of this, you know? So um, uh, it's 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 really weird. It's really strange, and it just goes on and on and on and on, and it never stops. What the hell? So uh, you'll be hearing more about this for a while. Uh, we're just we're just waiting for a resolution to the whole thing. Uh, so are you put are you putting aside money for rent? Just no. in case you have to. No. It all. No. My uh, my uh, lawyer said. I said, should we put money in escrow? And he said, why? He said, you don't owe anybody anything. You didn't sign a lease with the apartment of the people who own the apartment. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you know, I mean, eventually we might have to pay something, but we'll get some. We we'll get a lot of money out of this thing. Have you talked? Have you tried talking to the owner about creating a lease? Well, they have said in the past in this whole argument with our lawyers, hey, you know, we'd love to have a lease in their name, and we'd love to have them as the, uh, you know, but they, but they see what uh, here's what they don't want to do, okay? They, uh, New York landlords are all sleazy fuckers, you know. I think you can appreciate this, right, Jeff? They're all really sleazy motherfuckers. And the, one of the things is the apartment I'm in is maybe if they could get it out of being rent, con rent stabilized and if they could get us out, they could get probably the best rent of any apartment in this whole building because we have the best view. Huh. Okay? Uh, there are two other apartments on either side of us that also have the same view, but... <laughs> There's just something about ours that's just very expansive. Uh, and so they would love to get us out of here. They said, oh, well, we'll be happy to, like, find them another apartment in the building. And our answer was, go fuck yourself, you know. Uh, and plus, you know, we're in this apartment. And um, the law reads that uh, if a person is an illusory tenant and he tries to sublet to some, Number one, he has to pay the difference between what he was paying and what they were paying. And the difference is, in our case, about $2,000 a month for 32 months. And then there's a thing called treble damages. Okay? So you take that $64,000 and you treble it. Okay? So it starts becoming a lot of money. And so, you know, we might make some kind of restitution to the apartment owners uh, once this is settled. But you know what's going to happen? The landlord, I think, is going to lose this case. Really, yeah. he's going to lose it. He's going to lose it against the guy who was renting the apartment. The guy who was renting the apartment is going to lose his case against us. Okay? So if the landlord doesn't win this case, He'll go for our. He'll go for uh, appeal, and an appeal can take two years, and that's more lawyer fees, and that's you know, more you, free rent. Yeah, you know, you, well, you say free rent. We it's really not free rent. So far, we put out fifty-five, almost sixty thousand dollars in legal fees. Oh Jesus! 
Okay, so you take that over the six years, and we're paying about a thousand dollars a month rent. Now, here comes the best part, though. Our lawyer says, "Well, here's what happens. It's a rent stabilized apartment." In uh, 2003, when this guy first rented this apartment, they didn't register it, and they didn't register it for something like seven or eight years until about 2001 when they then tried to say that the going rate for the apartment was $2,200 a month. But the fact was that they didn't register it each and every year, so the clock stopped ticking in 2003 when the rent was $500. So my Registering lawyer, means what? What? What does registering mean? Uh, they have to, uh, it's, a, it's a yearly thing they do with the Department of Housing and the Department of Housing then takes that into effect, and they can only raise it so much every every year, all right? Uh, so that being the case, he could we could really have him pull it back to 2003 to the 500, and then start it going up starting in 2011, okay? Which means that my lawyer figures that by his estimation, he can get the apartment for us at under a thousand dollars a month. Nice. Well, so, whatever you're paying this attorney, it yeah. sounds like it's worth it. Oh, it's, it's very good. Yes, uh, yes, Jeff. Oh, turn on your mic, Jeff. You're on mute. All right, I'm on. Yeah. Um, my experience with New York and and the way it works mm -hmm. is there's a whole bunch of laws that were generated to protect the people who were the renters, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, right. Okay, and they had a whole bunch of rules that were pretty cool. Yeah. Except a whole bunch of people also figured out, ah, I know how to get away those things. Well, they and that's what goes on in New York every Day. Well, what they do is they try. Uh, I'll get to you in a second, Ray. Uh, they try their best to circumvent any laws that exist. Okay, and your job is to make sure they don't. Uh, and what their feeling is is okay. So we break the law here, and we break the law everywhere else. But if they only catch us doing this, then we've made all the money off the other stuff. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's the cost of doing business concept, you know. And the fact is, these guys, uh, you know, uh, they do things they can't do, but they just say, fuck you, you know. You've got to remember, the guys who have owned this apartment house were slumlords. And they suddenly found out they don't have a building that's a slum anymore. And, and uh, they still treat it like it is a slum building. Yeah, and the people in it they treat like they're slum tenants. It's very, it's very weird. But anyway, this thing just goes on and on and on and on, and I'm so sick of it going on and on. And today he said, "Can you do it in December?" And I said, "I said I'm getting so sick of this. I don't even know if I want to, you know." But here's the thing: I don't get okay. And, and folks, if you've ever been through a legal thing, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We held a deposition of all the parties concerned. My lawyer just sent me a copy of our, my deposition and Marjorie's deposition so that we could read it and make sure that we were consistent with the deposition when we go into court and testify. And I'm thinking to myself, why do we need to go into court and testify? Can't somebody just sit there and read the deposition? <laughs> I mean, I did it under you know, penalty of perjury. Just discovery, really. Huh? So, yeah. Deposition just, just is just discovery. Yeah, they but, really want you to do it in court in front of a. Yeah, well, that, that's fine, but it, you, you did it. You took an oath. Yeah. You know, you have a st stand the test of being able to perjure yourself. Their lawyers were there to ask us the questions and to grill us, just like you would in the courtroom. Only this thing was going to cost us, I don't know, $12,000 just so we can play courtroom. <laughs> you know, what, I, what I'm thinking of doing is taking my deposition with me and saying, you know, because this has been so long since all these events took place, 
The clearest recollection I had was when I did the deposition, because that was the closest to the time that the thing happened. So if you don't mind, when you ask me a question, I'm going to look up the answer in the deposition and read it to you. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. I mean, all, all the deposition, they, they try to catch you, the defense attorneys try to catch you in, you know... Um, They're trying to get you to fuck up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I, it's very hard for me to fuck up, and I'll tell you why. Because we're the only people in this entire scenario that are being told the truth, who are telling the yeah. truth. And it's yeah. very hard for you to not be consistent if you're telling the truth. It's yeah. very easy for you to be inconsistent, witness Donald Trump, when you're lying all the time. Because you have to yeah. keep up with your lies and you can't do that. So I have no fear about that. You know, yes, Ray. I, I, sometimes I don't see your hand because it's all dark. No, out there. That's okay because it's dark. Just to clarify, how are you able to, when they ask you to leave, how are you able to say, no, we're not going to leave? I just, um, well, to begin with, the guy, the, the, the person who asked us to leave wasn't the landlord. The person who asked us to leave yeah. was the guy who was renting the apartment and so called rented us the apartment. <laughs> they have no authority. They have no authority. Oh, I see. Okay. They have okay. absolutely no authority. Yeah, and it was an illegal lease in the first place. Well, here's what happened. We immediately, when he called me, he said, I'm not going to renew your lease uh, on uh, in, in August. Because he figured that would take care of him and make him good with the apartment house. And uh, I said, well, we're not going to go. And he said, what? And I said, no, we're not going to go. I said, you know, we have the right, when you rent an apartment, you have the right to expect renewal. If you've paid your rent and you've been good tenants, you pretty well assume the right of renewal. They're not going to say, oh, we're not going to renew your lease just because we don't want you around. See, that's different in, in Palo Alto. What? Or in everywhere except Oakland and San Francisco. What do you they mean? Not really. uh, if the lease comes uh, to term in almost every city except Berkeley or San yeah. Francisco, because I am a landlord. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can choose not to renew it with no explanation. Well, you can choose not to renew it, but you, you do have a reasonable expectation of renewal, and I think in New York City that's a given, okay? No, yeah, New York City, but not here, because it's happened to me even as a renter. I had to leave, and I couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, we, we went, so yeah. we, immediately yeah. we immediately found a lawyer, and we found a good one, and yeah. um, he, we walked in, not knowing what to expect, you know, we, what we expected was he would say, well, you know, there's really very little you can do. The guy wants you out. You got to go. He looked at the situation and he looked at both of us and said, oh, this is illusory tenancy. I said, what does that mean? He says, you're entitled to the apartment. You're entitled to the money back. That's the difference between what he was paying in rent and what he was charging you. Okay. And this treble damages. And Marjorie and I said, okay, well, well, then go ahead with this. And we got up and walked out. And as we're walking down the street, we're just like high-fiving each other, <laughs> you know, because we didn't expect that. We expected, we, uh, well, you know, the best you can do is to try and stall him so you can get your stuff out of the apartment. And uh, it's been that way now for six years, you know. Wow. And, and wow. uh I mean, I would like a settlement because I would like to know that we have this place, that this place is ours. You know, I'm not getting any younger. And I don't think, you know, I could die before this thing is settled. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's really difficult, people your age, to move. I mean, that's just, that's just crazy. Well, we, 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 we can play that card, too, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if, 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 if you are completely aware of the case, you would see that really the only, well, in fact, there was a judge, one of the judges they went before, not the one that's going to be presiding over the trial, but the judge who was with them when we were in arbitration said there's only one innocent party here, and that's Mr. Schwarzman and Ms. Miller. He said these people haven't done anything wrong. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. I mean, you really can't find very much wrong that we did here. You know, we're not, what are we guilty of? We're guilty of wanting an apartment. And by the way, never being told it was a sublet. Yep. 
you know. And you have a contract to prove that. Well, we have a lease that he signed. Yep. Then yeah. not a sub. You know, if you if you are a subtenant, you get a subtenant agreement. That's what you sign, okay? And uh, he, they're holding. Huh? What, what were you saying? An illegal agreement. Ill, it was an illegal agreement. Yeah. And we were led to believe, you know, I was only told two months after the fact by him that, oh, no, this is a sublet. I went, what? Because if I'd known it was a sublet, people would say, you could say to me, well, what's your proof that you didn't know it was a sublet? And I'd say, if I knew it was a sublet, I would have never taken the deal. I would have never rented. I didn't want a sublet. You know, so yeah, the, the thing goes on and on and on. And uh, well, also the guy presented himself as the owner, correct? Yeah. Well, we were introduced yeah. to him by the real estate agent in his presence. He and his wife as the owners. Well, I mean, why so you went through a real estate agent. Uh, yeah. Well, she was a real estate agent. We went through another real estate agent who shared the the. Uh, the you know, the profits the, the the whatever with her because he he saw that it was available went in and he dragged took us to it and made all the arrangements and so on he believed he was the owner you know what <laughs> yeah so you know How, I I can't believe that he found oh so he believes he's the owner I can't believe that he found an attorney that will actually sue you I mean what is it? It's absurd. Well, wow. he's in it deep now. You know. Uh, you can always find an asshole attorney. Mm -hmm. Listen, yeah, uh, 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 what, what are you saying here, Ray? That you can't find an attorney to take your money? <laughs> yeah, you can. I know. I've just always gone to good attorneys who tell me whether or not I have a case. But I realize there are other types. Listen, our so. attorney would have told us you don't have a case if they didn't think we had a case. You know. Um, and it, it's just, uh, it's, it, it, it's one of those things that I went to myself, you know, why, why am I in the middle of all of this, especially at my age, you know, I, I just want to nest. That's all I want to do. And I don't have the feeling I can nest. Uh, and then this, this added thing about, you know, my mother's having a, a heart operation and I have to cancel the trial. Oh, well, thank you very much. Marjorie canceled her trip to Hong Kong. So yeah. she could be here for the trial. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, um, what the hell? You know, who knows? Who knows? Mm. Uh, anyway, uh, 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 anybody have any feelings about John Bolton? <laughs> <laughs> Good riddance. Well, he's looking for a job, so I, uh, he could have a show here on GabNet if he wants it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a great show. Yeah, it'd be a terrific show. Um, you know, hey, did you uh, hmm? did you guys talk about Billy Bush coming back the other day? Oh yeah, he's back. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mention it. I didn't mention it. But day. but he's back on, and that's pretty good actually. Yeah, I thought that was him. good to see him on. Yeah, no, it was really. It's nice to see him on. He, oh, he addressed. He's, he's the, the one end that end survived. Huh? He addressed it at the end of the show. And uh, you know, oh, oh, did he address it at the end of the show? I didn't see yeah. the show, yeah. So, so uh, I didn't. Uh, he just said, you know, he's gone through a lot, and uh, he's appreciative of his new chance on life. But you know, it was really hard, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he it, got screwed. This is the poor, the poor guy who yeah, got he stuck in the trailer got fired with Trump. In the first place. Yeah. Oh, because when Trump was doing the pussy grabbing thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God! I, I what a travesty! Trump's the one that should have got fired. Oh, by right. the way, no by, by the way, towards the end of our show, we're joined by Bree, who is in—I guess you're in your office in Kuala Lumpur, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, are you in your house yet? Yeah, finally moved into the house. That's why I was listening to your uh, updates on the uh, your housing situation. I, I can't imagine staying in the same place for so long. It just seems. So amazing. Well, you know? I mean, yep. uh, I, I I'm the kind of guy that will stay in a place forever. I hate moving, you know, and uh, I, I think most of the apartments I've stayed in, I've stayed in for ten years or so, you know. And the only but reason also I also that Alex, that apartment is just beautiful. I mean, I don't know how you're going to beat that. 
Well, right? I, I don't know how we're going to beat it either. But I mean, what it's I would like to incredible. do is I would like to do some things do you have to, to beat it. I would like to do some things to fix it because it, there are a few things that are shabby about it. And, um, you know, it's got good bones. That's what it's got. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, but I, I, we can't do anything. We want to put uh, our refrigerators falling apart. We'd like to get a new refrigerator. Uh, we'd have the building put one in, but they'd buy the cheapest refrigerator possible, and Marjorie right. wants... That's what my landlord did. Yeah. So, you know, um, so, you know, we can't do things like that because I'm not going to buy a refrigerator for a place I might not be in. And now, chances mm -hmm. are we're going to be in here. I'm not... That's not the problem. But you just don't go out buying a refrigerator for an apartment you don't rent, you know? I've been thinking about that because our the, the refrigerator we got is too small. And oh, really? I want a bigger one, but you know. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so uh, but anyway, Billy. So Billy Bush did talk about it on the show. I didn't realize that. Uh, uh, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. I felt he got a raw but deal. I, I, but I, well, honestly, I have some inside info from people that work there that he wasn't necessarily innocent on this whole deal, but uh, and that that people at Access were pissed off that he got the uh, promotion to NBC Today show and that they released that to take him down. Oh, really? Oh, that's yes. interesting. That's yes. interesting. Yeah, because he did get that deal at NBC. And, uh, you know, I, again, you know, as with all those people who got caught up in the Me Too thing, uh, I felt it was a bit unfair on the part of NBC. I mean, you you don't fire somebody unless you know he's guilty or been proven guilty, you know. But apparently and, there was some inside information that was released uh, to NBC that uh, added to the case. Well, yeah, but the only case yeah, that he, so, the incident was ten years before. Yeah, and more than that, the that incident week. the incident was not one. Which, uh, let me put it this way. If I were in his situation and I had Donald Trump there and I were bringing him in for an interview in my little, you know, Access Hollywood bus or whatever, I think I would probably go along with him, whatever he was saying, to try and what? humor him, to try and humor him so I don't fuck up the interview. Well, you want to you want your interviewee to warm up to you and you want to pretend like you're on his side when yeah. you are not. Exactly. That's that's, yeah, that that's kind of great interviewing fun. skill, right? There. You know, and so you don't suddenly you can't be... start chastising. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what did they expect him to do in that situation? Yeah. You know, all you he know, did was that. he he laughed at what he was saying. You know, but he he just I don't think he was egging him on particularly. Trump was no. acting behaving badly because Trump behaves badly. But also, right. you know, Trump was talking about Nancy O'Dell. Uh -huh. That was the girl he was talking about. And so being that Nancy was his co-host, you know, there was extra blame there. Well, who was ta what, what what were they referring to when he was when he got into the discussion about oh, if you can gra you can grab him by the pussy if you want to. That was Nancy. He was talking about Nancy O'Dell grabbing by the pussy. Yeah, and yeah. if he had been on Howard Stern's show, nobody would bat an eyelid. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, they would have he would have said, "Can I see? Yeah, can you dance is, we've all, please?" Yeah. What? But, but we've all been in this situation. Yeah, I mean, you're trying to keep somebody in good humor. Uh, they start saying something that makes that you don't agree with, that makes you nervous. Uh, mm -hmm. So you laugh about it. Yeah. Uh, you go along with it just because you don't want to create conflict. I mean, no matter who he's talking about, what's he supposed to do? Well, you don't want you can't to be that with Donald Trump and start chastising him before an interview. That would be absurd. But also, you have to remember the time in which it was happening, which was about ten years prior. There was a different sensibility, as well. You know, I yeah. mean, all my life, if I felt that I was in a situation where I could do it, and somebody acted like that, I would, I would mention to them that that's not right for you to say. Okay, you really shouldn't say things like that. But I'm not, I'm not everybody. And I don't know that if I had somebody famous who uh, I was going about to interview and I had to keep him happy, that I wouldn't just kind of like go along with what he was saying in order to get him down in the seat and start interviewing him. You know. 
And then I might say something like, you told me during the warm-up here that you would grab a woman by their pussy. What did you mean by that? You know, but, but Alex, who was talking about uh, Lori? Yeah. Wouldn't you be more defensive? Um, I was always defensive about anybody who would treat Lori Thompson, who was my newswoman and my co uh, cohort on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was very, I was very protective of her. Yeah. Right, but uh, why wasn't Billy Bush protective of Nancy O'Dell? Uh, wait, uh, wait a second. Where are you getting this Nancy O'Dell? Well, I didn't hear anything about Nancy O'Dell. When, okay, when I first of all, I, I, I work 50, for entertainment tonight for 15 years. Okay. I, I know what? her, and I know a lot of people who worked at Access Hollywood at the time, and I had inside information from people who worked at Access Hollywood that act, people at Access Hollywood leaked that to NBC on purpose. To Was get there part of the recording we didn't hear then? Was, was there something that we I, know, I, I think what I think what he's saying is, if you may remember the the context of how this all happened, Billy Bush got a very nice contract to go over to NBC to help host the Today Show. All right, uh, and uh, he went over there, and I guess some people at Access Hollywood were a little pissed at that, uh, and so they released the tapes. Or exactly. they didn't release the tape. Well, they probably never had the, those tapes on they the air. It to, they leaked it to NBC. Yeah, leaked it to yeah. NBC in order to get even with Billy Bush. Exactly. Yeah. But, but my time. point is this. My point is, if it was just Donald Trump and Billy Bush in the trailer, and that's the only recording there is, how does anybody know that he was talking about Nancy O'Dell? Did he? Did he? Because that's, they were, he was about to get off the bus to talk to Nancy O'Dell. They did. In right, fact, but, they, but there was, was nothing in the recording that even. There was video of them getting off the bus and talking to Nancy O'Dell. Right, but there's nothing in the recording that even implies that they were talking about. It Nancy was absolutely Odell. implied that they were about to times. get off the bus to talk to Nancy O'Dell. No, I know. But, but, but yeah, but when he was talking, and he was referring to Nancy O'Dell. Well, I don't think he was referring to Nancy O'Dell when he was talking about grabbing pussy. I think in that case, what he was talking about. <clears throat> was that, well, when you're like I am, a big star on TV with your own big TV show, uh, you can just uh, grab a woman by the pussy and uh, they won't stop you. Didn't he yeah. say he was going to buy a furniture or something? He was telling Billy Bush, like, I took a furniture shop. I remember him. I that was to... another woman that he was That was another? About. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy's all over the place. Well, it's nice that he's into <laughs> furniture, you know. But I mean, but uh, I didn't mean I didn't mean to be, I didn't mean to be confrontational. I just didn't understand the link to how anybody would know that uh, <clears throat> Billy Bush was thinking about Nancy O'Dell when Trump said that. I just don't see. I how think that in happened. context, it's obvious. Yeah, he was. Really? Uh, yeah. They had been talking, huh. and then they were getting off the bus to go get interviewed by her, and then. Yeah. Um, Trump said as an aside to him that he loved getting interviewed by pretty women or something because when you're famous you can do anything you want you can grab them by the pussy or whatever exactly. yeah but, the, he, but he was talking about other women he wasn't talking about Nancy O'Dell yeah, well, I mean, yeah, don't listen to it again I think the question the question that begs to be answered here was did Billy Bush get a bad raw deal out of this yeah I think he did and I, think I, he think he did. did. I think he did I think he did based on what we know of course he did you know, now I don't know but what Billy kind. Bush I don't, not I, it. You know, not I don't know what kind of guy B uh, Billy Bush is or was, because when something like this happens and people don't come to your defense, maybe you're an asshole. You know, uh, and so that would make me think that maybe he was an asshole because nobody seemed to come to his defense. Well, that's why people at Access tried to out him because he was. Yeah. Can I ask you yeah, a question? Yeah. Yes. You know, you're right, Alex. This is really a bad deal on Billy Bush. Because think about it like this. This was leaked. So it wasn't like this was on TV. So basically, really, what was Billy Bush supposed to say if you were in his situation, Alex, and this never aired on TV? You can't. He, Billy Bush can't really say, oh, Don, you shouldn't act like this. He's not his father. He's just the guy. This is off camera like. Yeah, you know, I'm not there to keep this. All I'm saying is, is that I, I don't, as as a person who is in this business, who has done this, been involved in, in in, um, you know, getting people onto my show and making them happy about getting ready to be on my show. I understood fully why he was not telling 
you know, Billy Bush uh, telling Donald Trump, Donald, that's not right, that's insensitive, uh, uh, you shouldn't say things like that. So, yeah, th can I ask you a question? Yeah. Like, when well, he actually, oh, can I ask you one question, Alex? When, when mm -hmm. the other guy said, like, if he said that to Lori, who worked for you? Yeah, but the question is, Alex, you would have said something because he would have said it on the air, and I could see you saying, hey, listen, Donald, yeah. that's not the right thing to say. But I have been known to do that. You know, it's I, a big difference between on the air and off the air. Yeah, yeah, off the air. I don't, I don't think off the really air, off the air. Well, you know what I do? Can I, can I just tell you thing. something quickly that I, I had made it a policy uh, uh, that I never. Uh, I guess I can see you, Bree, waving your hand. Uh, uh, or did he just hang up? Are you there, Bree? I, 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 I guess, I guess he hung up or something. I don't know. Uh, Sometimes it's hard for me to see everybody. Um, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say. What was now. your policy about on Oh, the yeah, my side? policy usually was is that I never wanted to talk to the person I was going to interview before I actually had them on the air. Uh, yeah, well, that yeah. was... Yeah, so I, I would many times, you know, they would sit them down and I would kind of ignore them until the light went on and then I went, hi, how are you? What's happening? Johnny Carson did. Yeah. Uh, and the reason for that is, is you don't want, you don't, to begin with, you don't want to get in a conversation that's really good, and then somehow you have to recreate it when you get on the yeah. air, you know, so. But, but I do know the dynamics of trying to keep uh, somebody happy before you put them on the air. And, and so I kind of felt sorry for Billy Bush. He was only doing his job. He didn't want to scare off what was then a good guest to have on the show. Okay. And who knows? Trump can get this guy fired too if he says something. They say if he says something wrong to Trump, he can get him maybe canned out of his job. You don't even know. It might be like, hey, listen, Trump's an asshole. But what am I supposed to do? You know, Mike, not... Trump was a star of NBC at the time. It, 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 Mike, it, yeah. What? How old? How old was that tape, Mike? I think it was 2005. I, think I don't remember. Been... Yeah. So, so that thing was buried for a long time. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Billy decides he's going to go to you know NBC. And they decide they're going to let that thing out. So there's something to say about what Billy Bush's, you know, personality was like, or what he did to, you know, access. That was oh five. Before he left. Right. right. Yeah. So before he left, he did. Yeah. He must have, yeah. you know, burned some bridges or something. Jeff's got his hand up. Jeff. I'm curious as to who was working for the camera guy. For who, the video, uh, who was working? The camera guy. There wasn't. There was a. They had audio. The reason that the, most of this audio that got Trump in trouble mm -hmm. took place in the uh, bus. In the bus. And they were, oh, but they were all miked at the time with wireless mics, and so yeah. the tape was rolling on that. Well, whose uh, van was it? I guess. I wonder if Trump knew he was being. It was the Access Hollywood bus. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they were probably mic'd up before they came out. Oh, yeah. And getting no. ready to go in. Hey, the one thing you learn about in this business, and maybe Trump never learned say. it, was that uh, if you're going to the bathroom, make sure you know where the switch is on that mic that you've got yeah, on. Yeah. Because hot mic, hot mic. Uh, no, because they can hear everything's going on. You know, and I always, always learned where that switch was. I always had it. Hey, I'm going to the bathroom, and a click, you're not going to hear me yeah, take yep. a leak. You know, Ray's had his hand up for a while. Yes, Ray. Oh no, I was just gonna. I, I, you know, I've been through that a lot with those mics. And if the person running the board doesn't turn off your mic, like mm -hmm. Alex said, they can hear you taking a shit. They can hear you swearing backstage. And they uh, can also get even with you. Yeah, they can, and yeah. I've known. And, 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 that. and that's what they did oh, with and, Billy Bush. You know. Yeah. Anyway, the theme is on now. By the way, I, I don't know what happened to Bree. He suddenly said goodbye, and I guess it was because sometimes I can't see everybody raising their hand, so I have to I have to apologize. I think he might have that. been waving goodbye. Oh, okay. Anyway, but we left him there anyway, so that you can you can see him what, over there. There, there he is. Right there. Anyway, uh, hey, listen, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ray, for taking your evening stroll with us. Jeff, great having Hello. you here. Of course, uh, Charlie, always a pleasure. Uh, Tony, good having you here as usual. Uh, Kevin, always fun having you on the program. Mike, you can call more often. I won't hold it against you. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, 
uh, Bree, who uh, who left us far too early. It sounds like he died or something like that. Anyway, uh, that's that's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye to the audience out there, and I'll wave back. Okay, there we go. That's our uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Good show, a lot of fun, a lot of little piddling, ridiculously insignificant topics. Uh, listen, the intersection is next over most of this same uh, network called GabNet, and then we'll see you again. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, tomorrow night after Damian Chaplin does the exchange at 9:30, we'll be here at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life, and in the meantime. If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>